Over the past two years, Google has been going through significant updates and changes. And the people that have been struggling the most with these changes are not newcomers to Google Ads, but people who have been managing and optimizing Google Ads campaigns for over three years. And the reason for why more experienced Google Ads managers are facing these challenges rather than people who are new into the Google Ads game is because Google Ads has significantly changed how it has functioned. And because Google Ads has changed, if you, the Google Ads manager, or if you're looking after optimizing your Google Ads accounts for your business, if you haven't changed how you approach structuring and optimizing your Google Ads campaigns, you'll find yourself very quickly in the situation where you're using outdated strategies and structures which will then be giving you very poor results. And the changes that have occurred is that previously in Google Ads, you could use very, very specific search terms that you wanted to target with very, very specific groups of products or even ad copies that you wanted the user to be able to see. And both of those functions are now not the case. And there's some people out there even still trying to limit the order that people can use the search terms. And Google just doesn't work like that anymore. Even if you are using exact match keyword targeting and you set up your ad groups using single keyword ad groups, your results are not gonna be sustained for the long term because you're using an outdated strategy. So I wanted to release this video because moving forward for success with Google Ads, you need to be able to embrace the increased automation and AI technology that Google is fast releasing onto its Google Ads campaign types. And you need to be able to structure and optimize your Google Ads campaigns in a way that your optimizations and the structure that you are using are set up in a way that best allows Google to really use the full extent of its AI technology on your Google Ads campaigns. But just to be clear, and if you're a little bit unsure, the two core changes which have happened are firstly around your keyword targeting, and then also around the AI and how that interacts with your ad copy. So let's firstly talk about keyword targeting. So for as long as Google has been around, there has been three core types of match types, which is your broad, your phrase, and your exact match. And now I know there was broad match modifiers, but because they're not here anymore, we're not even to talk about them. And the way that would work is obviously your broad match. It was always around, as the name suggests, a broader or a wider range. You would give Google an initial keyword theme and then it would move out from there. Then there was your phrase match, which was all about targeting keywords in your phrase. So it didn't matter what order the keywords were in, as long as the user's search term had all of the core keywords in your keyword that you had selected, your ads would show, and then exact match, as the name suggests, the user had to use the exact keyword phrase that you were targeting, and even in that exact order. But now that is no longer the case. And the reason for that is because Google has switched from targeting the keywords that you're entering to actually targeting the user's meaning or the user's intent. And this is why things are getting a lot broader because Google is using its AI to really look into what the user has, not only searching that individual search term, but what they've been searching over the previous days, weeks, and months. And I've even seen some cases where we're targeting the exact match keyword of online motorcycle insurance, and that has been triggering ads for competitors call centers for their motorcycle insurance. So you'd have the issue where the user would type that competitor's name and their call center, they would see the ads that we were targeting and then they would click on it and it wasn't until they were on the phone call that they realized that they were actually talking to a completely different motorcycle insurance company. And then the second major change is in and around your ad copy and your creative. And this is something that Google is rolling out right now even on its Google search campaigns. And they're using a term which is called ACAs or automatically created ads. This is the latest update that Google is bringing into Google Ads, and this notification was only released in May at Google's latest keynote. And they gave a product update where they said this. Last year, we started rolling out automatic created assets, or ACA, for search ads, which will use content from your landing pages and existing ads to generate headlines and descriptions. Soon we'll be supercharging ACA with generative AI to more effectively create and adapt search ads on the context of a query. 
For example, with a search for skin care for dry, sensitive skin, AI can use content from your landing page and existing ads to create a new headline that aligns even more closely with the query, such as soothe your dry, sensitive skin. This helps you to improve ad relevance while staying true to your brand. So you can see now that the changes that Google brought out two years ago to keyword match types is now fast coming into even the ads that we are creating. So what does this all mean? And I know a lot of people out there are freaking out because they're starting to see bad results. But the problem isn't Google Ads. The problem is the way that you've structured your Google Ads and the way that you're optimizing your Google Ads. And the reason for why I know this is because even while all these people have been whinging about these changes to Google Ads, my direct clients, students of my courses, and those that are involved in my 10X Google Ads community are still seeing amazing results with Google Ads every single week and every single month. And this is because we've been going through and updating the way that we structure and optimize our Google Ads campaigns. And this brings us to the big question of how do you see success with Google Ads in 2023? And that's what we're gonna be answering in today's video. But before we get into all of those good answers, in case we haven't met yet, my name is Aaron Young, I'm from Define Digital Academy, and I'm your 15,000 hour Google Ads master. And if you are serious about seeing success with Google Ads in 2023, maybe you're a business owner who's running your own ads, or you're a Google Ads freelancer, or you're working in a Google Ads agency, and you wanna see amazing results for your clients, can I encourage you to join up to our 10X Google Ads community? And this is a community where we've got members from all over the world who are giving support and helping each other in our community feed. There's also live masterclasses of extended teaching that I don't release here on YouTube. And there's also live group coaching calls where I get in and review your accounts and answer any current questions you have with Google Ads. If you'd like to know more about the community, because it would be great to see you there, you can follow that link in the description below. And if you follow that link, you're also gonna get a trial masterclass so you can see some of the quality training that we give inside my 10X Google Ads community. So now that we know the changes that are being rolled out in Google Ads, what we really wanna get to is that important question of how do you see success with Google Ads in 2023. And the first strategy that you need to be rolling out is having less ad groups with more keywords. And this is particularly true for your search campaigns. And what I mean by that is that historically, you would have multiple amounts of different ad groups. Sometimes I would have you know upwards of 20 plus different ad groups inside a different campaign. Whereas now, the vast majority of my campaigns have no more than three different ad groups. But all of those ad groups can have upwards of 30 or 50 different keywords. And the reason for why we need to change this is that those ad groups still only have the one keyword theme, but as we said at the start, Google is now targeting much broader keyword themes. So as Google's targeting is getting broader, we need to then change and update how we do it. So our ad groups are gonna have broader themes, which means we're gonna have more keywords, but they still need to be all on that same keyword theme. Let me show you what that looks like. All right, so firstly, I just wanna show you the results. And what I wanna show you in through here is that this is looking back at March and April of last year. And you can see in this account in March, we had 11 conversions at a cost per conversion of $41. April was eight conversions at $56. Fast forward to this year, March was 25 conversions at $18. And then April was 14 conversions at $32. So seasonality, we're getting better results across both March and April. And what I do wanna confirm in here is that you can see that we haven't changed the budget at all. This has all come about through me adding in a new structure and a new methodology of optimizations. So what I wanna show you through here, whereas previously we had three different ad groups, we now only got one ad group running. And that was because in this one, these all of these three different ad groups, that keyword had been merged into one. Now in this example, which was promoting our fitness software gym management system, we just found that we didn't need to break out the different ad groups into different keyword themes like fitness software, gym management software, health club software, because with Google's new meaning intent, it saw fitness, gym, and health with all having the same meaning. So rather than having those keywords like health club management software or gym management software or fitness club management software, they were all now seen as having the same intent or the same meaning. So that's why we were now able to group them into the same ad group. And that's what a successful search campaign looks like 
under this new format. And the reason for why that's successful is you're stopping different ad groups triggering the same user search terms. You wanna group them all into one ad group and then that way you can then direct them all to the same headlines and all to the same landing pages. And it will also add that this has actually also become easier to manage because now rather than checking the search terms and the ad copy and the demographics for three different ad groups, you're just doing it for one. So when this is set up correctly, you can actually see that this is a hugely positive thing for both the client because they're getting better, better results and also for the Google Ads managers because we are now able to do less work because we're leveraging Google's AI and automatic learning. But I do need to stress, you only see those successful results when it's done in the correct way. And now that brings us to the second core strategy that you need to be implementing for success in Google Ads in 2023. And this is especially true if you're running an e-commerce store. So you're doing a campaign for any type of e-commerce online selling. And this recommendation and this strategy is, is to transition from shopping campaigns across to Performance Max. Now, I do need to give a big word of warning that I know on this channel, it may seem like I'm very pro Performance Max, but I do wanna stress that when Performance Max first came out, I didn't touch the campaign platform for the first six months because I wanted to give it time for all the bugs to sort of be worked out. And then at the start of last year, so the start of 2022, we were doing some testing and all the way up until about July, August of 2022, we were still seeing better results with shopping campaigns as opposed to Performance Max. But since August of September of 2022, time and time again, we've been seeing better results with Performance Max. Now let me explain the reason for why that is happening. You need to remember with Performance Max campaigns that it has a discovery element inbuilt into that campaign. The Performance Max campaign will bid more aggressively against that user because they've already had some interactions there. And then they'll follow up and continue to remarket to that user until you get the conversion. Versus a shopping campaign which is just picking up at that user intent mode, so when they complete that search. Now the reason for why shopping was still performing better is because it had better conversion data. And that was kind of holding it through for that first up to about 12 months of Performance Max being integrated. But what has been happening now for the previous about eight or nine months is that as Performance Max campaigns have been getting better conversion data, Google is able to better highly target users once they've had some early interactions with your ads. So that's why I'm recommending that you do make the switch over to Performance Max. But I wanna show you the right way to do that because it's not just about turning off all of your shopping campaigns and then starting Performance Max today. That is gonna be a recipe for disaster. Let's jump into a screen share so we can get this right. So what I wanna show you in here is I want you to look at these date ranges because what I'm gonna be doing is I'm gonna be taking you through and showing you some quarter by quarter results. What we had here at the start of last year, so the start of 2022, we had a core search campaign, a core shopping campaign, and we started to introduce our Performance Max campaign. So what I want you to notice in here is this Performance Max campaign still only had some really small data. We had 664 clicks, only a spend of $434, whereas the other search and shopping campaign was taking the majority of the spend and the majority of the clicks. And you can see from here, the conversion cost per values were fairly similar, but the Performance Max only had a small amount of the conversions. So we'd started to introduce Performance Max in about February, March of 2022. Now we're looking at the results for April. So let's go ahead and have a look at these results. And you can see through here, once again, this Performance Max was starting to take a little bit more of the load, but the conversion value cost actually dropped down, which is quite common with the Performance Max campaign. You'll see a good little blimp when you first start it, and then it'll drop away. And that's because it's first picking up those remarketing conversions, so people who are already in your audience. But you can see through here in April, the better performing campaign was still our search campaign. We had switched off shopping by that stage, but we will keep the search campaign going. Now let's move that across to May. And we can see from here that the Performance Max is now starting to overtake the spend, but the conversion value cost is still a little bit lower, you know, 7.33, still pretty good, but the search campaign is still performing better. But now this spend is pretty much the same. And now let's move across to June. And then when we've got across to June, you can start to see once again, the search has started to come back and you can see it kind of alternating between the two. So let's now fast forward a little bit. And right now we're looking at July and August of last year. And this is where you can start to see the performance max really started to take over with that conversion value cost of just under seven versus 
versus the search campaign down at three. And now let's fast forward it even further where we're looking at September. And now you can see that the performance max campaign, this one in here, is at that conversion value cost of 8.65. Now I wanna show you the full results of January 2022 through to May 2023. And you can see that we're looking at all of the campaigns, whether they're enabled or paused. And what I wanna show you in through here, you can see this conversion value cost. So in March 2022, it was 689. In March 2023, it was 804. April was 690 in 2023 versus a 546 in 2022. So you can see that even seasonality, our results are getting better. So we're getting a higher conversion value cost and we're also seeing a lower cost per conversion. So the important thing, if you wanna see a successful transition from shopping and search campaigns for your e-commerce, across to Performance Max, you don't do it all in one go. The best way of going about it is to start your Performance Max campaigns, and then when you start to see the Performance Max campaigns increase in performance, slowly start to scale down those search and shopping campaigns. Now, I know that we don't wanna be having different campaigns targeting the same products, but I found that this is the best way to do it, and think of it, this is not long-term, this is only for a period of time, anywhere from six weeks to three months, depending on how long it takes for that transition. What what you're really wanting to look for is you're wanting to really switch over completely to Performance Max once you've started to see the results and the volume in your search and your shopping campaigns start to drop down. And that's when you can then fully go over to your Performance Max campaigns. So for success with Google Ads, what you need to be remembering for your search campaigns, you want to be having less ad groups with more keywords. And then if you're in the e-commerce space, what you want to be doing is you do want to be making the switch out of a performance max. Like I said, don't do it all in one day. You want to be doing it on a slower process. Now, if you've got multiple product categories, you may even want to go through and do it just one product category at a time. In that case, what I do recommend is that you don't go after your top performing category, you go after a mid-tier category so that you, once again, you can make sure you're getting enough conversion value in and you're not risking it all. You are doing it in a strategic and a very smart approach. So that's how you can still see success with Google Ads in 2023, even with all of those changes that are happening. Now remember, Google will continue to keep these changes rolling through. So if you wanna stay up to date, remember to follow that link in the description below so you can find out more about my 10X community. Now to help you even further, if you wanna make sure that you've got your campaign set up correctly, in 2023 using the new Google Ads dashboard, I want you to go through and watch this video right here to see the step-by-step -step process in how to set up search campaigns and check out this video right here to see the step-by-step -step process in how to set up your Performance Max campaigns. Thank you again, see you next time.